Hey, what's good, YouTube? This is Deviant Spotty here, and I finally finished this whole guy roaches in our crib. And I'm not gonna lie, it didn't take me as long as I thought I would originally. To be honest, there was times I just couldn't keep reading it. Like it's a short read, but it just takes some time to get through. So when it comes to this book, it's not that it's truly terrible. Just trust me, in the self-publishing section of Amazon, I definitely read worse books. But there are still a few issues and concerns that I have when it comes to this book. Like, like I said, it wasn't the worst, but there was a just like anything it has a few con pros and cons to it so like honestly when it came to this book there were things i did like like austin and maya is actually having a relationship even though he was in jail he never got to see her but he was actually still positive and it wasn't completely ratchet on that point and of course the writing did kind of improve as the story went on because thankfully he stopped interjecting his opinion of his own characters at, you know on the page which is kind of irritating because it's like it's understandable if you create a character you don't like but he created characters he completely did not give a shit about and then just continued to shit on them like i understand if there's a specific trope you don't like or if there's people that these people people that these characters are based on that you don't like and you continue to shit on them but if you really don't like your characters as much like i don't understand why you would continue to shit on them like he did like Devonte and marvin from the from for when they had sex like he completely went into detail about them having sex and then basically just called all three of them disgusting while they were doing it and it's like you're the one writing this you didn't have to go this far you could have just said you know you just could have called them all nasty or something but you're the one that went this deep into detail and you're calling them disgusting either way but the other thing that kind of got to me about this book was he did a i'm sorry one of the things that did get to me about this book was he did a lot of over explaining like in the very same thing i was just talking about when he like he says things in context and then tries to explain them as if he doesn't think you're going to understand them like the scene i was just talking about when Devonte and marvin are about to have sex with frequisha he said they're literally talking about if you can find a chick to handle multiple dinos at a time niggas aren't going to complain and then he goes dinos is dicks in chicago and i'm like yeah we picked up on that that's context you didn't have to explain that to us like that is something we could have got but then there's other areas where he doesn't do enough explaining like when we find out that the, that the boys or for Quisha's sons don't have the same father and he literally just writes it in there like oh I forgot to mention they don't have the same father and he literally just puts that in there like it was a note he forgot to add and like really you, that that was the best way you could have put that part in the story there's another you, you couldn't have just said that they favored their fathers and then just described two different kids like just have one being slightly darker you know different facial features and describing the other one to like you could have literally just put in, describe two different men and then said they both favored their fathers that still would have given the same the same context we still could have picked that up without you just having to say oh they don't have the same father i forgot to tell you that was one of the things that killed me and like i said some places he goes over some places he doesn't do enough like one of the places he went over is when dr sterling is or sorry when when dr sterling is one of the officers in the prison with austin i'm sorry no she's a doctor obviously and she goes to pat, put her, uh, pat him on the back to try and tell him something's going to be okay. And he specifically states that it was a friend pat and mentions that Dr. Sterling is a lesbian. Like, that that was not needed. Like, even if you want to introduce her as a lesbian, there are still other ways you could have done that. You didn't have to sneak it in as if you were trying to say, hey, these two are just friends and nothing's going to happen. You could have just left them as friends. 
you don't have to under you don't have to explain everything i think people can pick up on the context that she's just a doctor there to help him because she cares about him and doesn't want to see him in that current situation but like i said it's just one of those things where too much in some places some in another but i think if i had to say anything was just the most I'm sorry, if I had to say anything that really dragged dragged down this book for me, it wasn't the writing or the character, even though I could clearly tell he didn't like, so I'm not going to go too deep into that because I already explained that in my last video about how he feels about Fred Quisha. But one of the things that gets to me in this book is it is really short. Like most books, you know, have something happen they have a conflict a resolution you know things of that nature there's build up shit goes south and then you know climax they try to resolve the problem and then you put your cliffhanger at the end or something i don't feel like anything really happened in this book I'm like yeah there were some things they explained we introduced we were introduced to some characters and we got to see how they are but then like when it's actually time for you know something to happen to these characters it just hits an abrupt end and he just stops and then he's like check out the next book and it's like that that's not a cliffhanger this literally feels like the second book should have been a part of the first because as soon as something actually happened to the characters that makes you want to read on that's when you end the book that part doesn't feel like a cliffhanger that just feels like you cut your book in two and i'm I mean, we already know there's a second and there's probably going to be a third judging from the way it, it's written and I'm probably not going to read the second I'm not even going to lie because don't get me wrong it's not that this book was that bad like I said when it comes to self publishing on Amazon I have read way worse books which actually leads me into my next thing his titles we already know that this is something he said himself that they are outledged completely to draw attention to them like which i can't say i fault him for you you're trying to be a writer so you make some you try to you need to stand out a bit especially when it comes to amazon and a lot of people can self-publish and charge 99 cents for the first book 399 for the next one so i'm not drawing fault with that it's just when it comes to the ratchetness of this book i expect it a lot worse to be honest and I don't want anybody to think I'm challenging him to go out and write something as ratchet as possible because he might have something even worse in his catalog or library and I'm going to be honest I don't plan on doing that I am definitely not going to be going through all of his books trying to see what's the worst ratchet thing I can find I think I'm good but even if it if I had to actually give this book an actual score I would honestly say even I would honestly say it's about a 4 out of 10 because it just feels like the main thing that dragged that dragged it down for me well actually there was multiple things that dragged it down for me to be honest the story wasn't that bad i actually was able to get into the story a little bit once i was able to get once he stopped interjecting his opinion on his characters every so often the story was not that hard to get into you know you actually find yourself rooting for the grandma in this situation but there are other things that that are just going on that kind of drag that just kind of dragged it down in some places like one of the biggest things I would say I would have against this book is if you read anything or if you've seen something it would make you think like it's gonna be a book of him versus his baby mom to get custody of his daughter which never happens in the book like they are the main two catalysts of this book. She, he's supposed to be the protagonist, and she's the antagonist. They don't have anything to do with each other in the entire book, other than that, other than their kid. They don't have any scenes together. They don't even talk to each other. They literally do nothing with each other, which is one of the reasons. Like, I think the worst thing about this book is just legitimately how short it is, because it feels like whatever is going to be in book two probably should have just been in book one to complete it from there because especially when you hit the ending it's going to be an abrupt wall and stop and as soon as you're thinking oh my god what's going to happen next that's when it ends and it's like that's not a cliffhanger you just stop the book as soon as something actually happened like don't get me wrong you see how the characters are but 
up until that point, they're just going through their day-to-day -day lives. And then when something actually happens out of the normal that, you know, that should make them have a response, it just stops. Which is truly annoying. I don't understand why you would do that. That's not a cliffhanger in my opinion. That's just you cutting out a part of your book. But, um... But actually, there is one more thing I would like to address, and the fact that there's a lot of people saying they don't think he's black, or that he's actually black, I can kind of understand now, because some of these lines in there don't sound like a line that a normal black person would write about other black people. Like, he has one when he's talking about Fred Quisha and her friends, and he calls them niggerettes, or an there's another time he's addressing them as well and he calls them nigga hoes or when she's talking when he's talking about her drinking with her friends in the club and you like you know niggas love that dark liquor like that just the way it's written in the book like if you actually read the book and read it put it in context it just doesn't like when you hear the author saying that you literally just imagine a white guy saying it to you so honestly a part of me can understand why some people are saying they don't believe this is that the picture which actually he admitted in one of his interviews that that picture that he has um, on his profile and everything on my Amazon that is not him he took that from some sort of group chat that was taken down so he said that picture is not him now he said he's not a white guy from Wisconsin or something so he didn't say anywhere else he was very specific about that part but I can understand why some people are saying they don't believe he's black and that he's just writing shit about black people and talking shit. Honestly, I can understand why because some of these lines are really kind of fucking terrible. Like, I've already given you the three three of the worst ones that I've seen in there. So part of me can kind of understand why some people are saying they don't think he's really black. Because, I mean, it's one thing for it to be a pen name. A lot of authors use a pen name. That's nothing new. But for him to be pretending to be black and then writing these ratchet ass stories, I think that would be the worst part. Because then this would just be a white guy who's clearly being racist, throwing in all sorts of stereotypes he can about black people into a book. And just saying, well, fuck you guys, this is the way you do shit. Like, there's just several lines in here. He talks shit. And you just, you just get the feeling it's a white guy. It's a racist ass white guy saying shit. Like, he... I can understand some of the things he's trying to say, but they just don't come across when you feel like it's somebody preaching to you while talking shit like that. Like, like you ever, I'm getting off topic before I was about even go into that analogy. So, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and end it there. So I'm not going to lie. It wasn't the worst book I've ever read, but it certainly wasn't good. And just the way it ended, honestly, for 99 cents. If you're into ratchet books, it's not bad. It's not the worst I've ever read. That still thinks that goes to a diary of an old freak on Amazon, which was just terrible. I don't know if I have the patience to do it, <laughs> to do a review on that one, because I'd have to reread that book, because I blocked out most memory of it. All I remember is the main character was terrible. The son was terrible. The people were terrible. Everybody was terrible. It was just terrible. Like, I don't... <laughs> I can't even say I want to remember it so I just said I was gonna end it and I'm rambling on again so you know what we're actually gonna end it there for this one for real y'all thanks again for watching and have a good one peace